Hello everyone. Welcome to scardia.com. I am your educator Dr. Lara Munir and in this second part of our lecture on heart murmurs we are going to discuss uh, start off from where we left off in the first part and go into the further details. So let me give you an outline or how of how we are going to proceed in this lecture. We left off with completing our discussion on the systolic heart murmurs. So in this uh, lecture we are going to start off with the discussion of the diastolic heart murmurs what is uh, diastole what happens during diastole what are the valves involved which valves are closed which valves are open and what are the various uh, murmurs occurring during the diastolic process we are going to start off with our discussion of the early diastolic murmurs the various types of uh, early diastolic murmurs Similarly, we are going to go proceed further, further and go through the discussion of the mid diastolic murmurs. For example, the murmur of uh, mitral stenosis. What happens with that murmur? How this murmur is affected by the uh, various uh, processes going on? What are the various uh, diseases that can lead to this uh, mitral stenosis murmur or other mid diastolic murmurs? Then we are going to discuss some continuous murmurs. What are the important clinical things to consider in this case? case and how to differentiate the continuous murmurs from the to and fro murmurs occurring in certain old age patients when there are multiple valvular pathologies occurring simultaneously <clears throat> going forwards uh, this is a very important part we are going to discuss the various bedside techniques which we do and what do uh, these bedside techniques do in relation to the preload and the afterload of the heart we are going to explain it in detail with the help of a whiteboard how the different changes in preload and afterload affect the various murmurs and give us an important clue moving forwards to where to concentrate in regards to that patient's presentation and that patient's pathology going onwards after we have completed a clinical discussion on the examination discussion we are going to look at the various diagnostic diagnostic modalities involved in uh, definitively diagnosing our patient we are going to look at the echocardiography what are the various indications of the echocardiography and what are the various types of echocardiography the transthoracic echocardiogram the alternative is a transesophageal echocardiogram and in certain patients uh, the magnetic resonance imaging of the heart and in certain patients when we suspect a coron uh, coronary pathology or the ischemic heart disease we can do a uh, invasive procedure like a coronary angiography or a ct angiography to look at the coronaries and uh, uh, look at into the further details what is wrong with the heart of the patient and in the last part of the lecture we are going to summarize our discussion of the two lectures with uh, a help of an integrated flow chart uh, giving us a very good idea of the different types of murmurs and what we are going to do in a stepwise manner uh, diagnostically to help definitively diagnose the patient's condition and how to proceed further with the workup so to watch this complete lecture and thousands of other medical lectures on different courses like the anatomy physiology the biochemistry or the clinical sciences log on to scardia.com and start your free trial today